And so, for those of you who want to live out God's purpose in your life and who want to be used for his good works, well, there is one way to be sure that you do it. <laughs> and that way is to walk in the Spirit. When you live a life of walking in the Spirit, you will arrive at the good purpose and plan that God has for you. And I must say, just because, yes, God has a good plan for you, it doesn't mean you won't have troubles. I mean, look at the story of Joseph. You know, he followed God. He was a part of God's good plan, but he was thrown into a pit by his brothers. He was then sold into slavery. He then went to prison. But in the end, what happened? All of that led to him being made a ruler in Egypt, which saved his entire family from famine. You see, when you are in alignment with God's plan for your life, even the bad times will actually be a setup for his good purpose. And of course, the best part of being in God's good plan is that it ends with you living forever with him on the new earth. And so, my friend, no matter what today may look like, no matter what you are going through in this moment, your future is amazing. When you walk in the spirit, the place you arrive at will be the place you want to be. So what is walking in the Spirit? Well, let's look at what Paul writes in Galatians. But I say, walk by the Spirit and you... Hi friends, this is Jaron with AOC Network, and you have just seen a clip from our recent documentary on walking in the spirit, and it's now available on the channel. We're going to expound upon some things within that presentation, and one of them is how to be used by God. Stay tuned. Now, in the film, we looked at the story of Joseph, which illustrates following God and being used by God. We explored how when Joseph followed God, he turned away from his lust and he didn't walk in his flesh. And no matter what happened, he kept his faith. And because of that, God used him. And we explored how likewise, when we follow the spirit, there is a similar pattern that takes place in our lives. When you study the way God worked with his people, especially here with Joseph, the pattern of how God used Joseph is really a pattern of how he works with all who desire to be used by him. Just as he blessed Joseph with specific gifts and talents that were connected to his purpose, he has done the same thing for us as well. And so it's really a beautiful thing because the closer you get to God, the more he allows you to also discover yourself. And he begins to reveal what he has put within you so he can use you. And so it's quite a journey. And another illustrative thing about Joseph is that he had no connections. He was actually the lowest of the low. In fact, so low that he was in a pit. They threw him in one. This man became a servant and then uh, he ended up in prison. But no pit and no prison could prevent God's plan. Wherever Joseph went, the gifts that God placed within him kept getting noticed. And so one takeaway here is a key to stepping into the purpose that God has for you is not your connections. It's not where you were born or where you were from or how low you think you have fallen. The key to stepping into your purpose is operating in your God-given gifts. 
When you begin operating in your gifts, nothing can stop God's plan. There are really two main keys or principles to being used by God for his purpose. Number one, walk in the spirit. That's huge. I mean, everything hangs on that. Walking in the spirit is what helps you to grow in God. It helps you to discover the gifts he has placed within you. And it keeps you on the right path to the right doors in life. And once God begins to show you what he has placed within you, then you must, number two, refine your talents and your gifts. So these are the really the main two keys here. God has given you gifts and abilities unique to you and your purpose in life. And when you walk in the spirit, he then reveals to you those gifts. And after that, it's up to you to refine those gifts. And when you refine the gift that God has placed within you, no matter where you are from, nothing can stop what God wants to do in your life. Look at David, great example. He had gifts to fight and he had a gift for music and he refined those gifts. And then he became so great at them that he began to get noticed and it led him to operating in his purpose. When King Saul was in distress, you know, he was being tormented. Um, he needed something to uh, help him, to put him at ease. And he needed to hear music. And one of his servants sent for David because David was so good at playing his instrument that the word about his musicianship had spread. And so in refining his gift, it led to him being brought into the presence of a great king. And that eventually, you know, led into David himself becoming a great king but he first had to refine his gift, <laughs> you see? And so when you desire to be used by God, ask for him to reveal to you the gifts that he has placed within you, and then ask him to lead you into how you can refine those gifts. And when you begin to refine the gifts that God has given you, when you do whatever you can to be the best at what God has invested in you, Nothing will stop where God wants to take you. Look at what the Bible says, Proverbs 18, 16. A man's gift makes room for him and brings him before the great. Which is again what happened to David. It's what happened to Joseph. And it's what can happen for us all when you work on the gift God invested within you, that gift of God will make room for you. But it all starts, it all starts with walking in the spirit. He then leads you into discovering and refining the gifts he has given you. And then you start to work as an ambassador of his kingdom. That's just the way it works. And so for those of you who have seen the Walking in the Spirit movie, we're going to look at a few details within it that some of you might have noticed, some of you may have missed it. And even with this clip that we just showed on here, you'll see something interesting. In the project, we show many scenes of roads and paths, and you know that represents the journey, the roads that we all could take in life. And we see this man here, he's about to begin his journey of being led by the Holy Spirit, and that's symbolized by the dove leading his way. And when we looked over this footage during the editing process, this number 30 was noticed. And uh, it's interesting when you think about it, because this video is about how we are given the Spirit of Christ and how when we are led by that Spirit, we are led into working for God on mission for God, like the way Jesus was on mission. We are filled with the Spirit of Christ. Now, how old was Jesus when he began his mission in life? He was 30 years old. And actually, there was a parallel with that, because when you study the life of Joseph, when he began his true purpose and assignment, guess how old he was? He was 30 years old. 
It says Joseph was 30 years old when he entered the service of the king of Egypt. And that was the assignment that allowed him to bless the people of God. And so throughout scripture, you will see many parallels and other examples of entering service at the age of 30. You know, one of the standards of being a high priest was one had to be at least 30 to begin that assignment. And so the symbol of 30 being linked to working for God, being on mission for God, being on assignment for God is so fitting here because I think the takeaway is no matter what your age is, okay, no matter how young or how old, when you begin a journey of being led by the spirit of Christ, that spirit leads you into your assignment in life. The spirit of Christ is a spirit of service, and he's going to lead you into how you can serve God. Another thing that we explored was how God is the author of the book that we are all within. And that was just such a powerful thing to explore, because when you consider the total witness of the biblical canon, God is referred to as the Alpha and the Omega. He lives outside of time. And so as the creator of timelines, of course, he would not be trapped within the timeline that he wrote, right? Through Christ, of course, he chooses to delve into our timeline by taking on human flesh, but he is still above it, outside of it, the alpha and the omega. He's so much bigger than the box that we are all really confined in. And so this is why in this video, one thing we tried to communicate is that while we are called to choose Christ and we are called to follow him, it is good to be mindful that before our time even began, God in his sovereignty really already chose you to be on his side. You know, Christ, he says, he says, you didn't choose me, but I chose you. Of course, from our perspective, you know, it seems as if, you know, we are the ones choosing God. I mean, we are the ones who are praying and saying, God, I want to follow you. So yes, there is a point of us having a responsibility in that choosing. But from a grander divine perspective, we are already chosen. As the scripture says, you know, one can only find God if the spirit draws them, right? And so this is why if you happen to be a believer, you really can't boast. You really can only be grateful that his spirit drew you to him. And, you know, this is a tough topic. It's really a tough topic to discuss because in this movie, we talked about vessels and how we can be part of God's plan. And some commenters said that we did not stress God's preordinate election enough. And some thought that we actually stressed his election too much. And so it's hard. You, you can't really please everyone. The best thing that we really can try to do is share scripture and let God's spirit lead you with how to wrestle with certain things. But I think for the most part, I believe what was presented was helpful to show that God is sovereign outside of the timelines that we are all within. And therefore you can trust that he has already worked everything out if you follow him. That's the big takeaway here. You don't have to worry about God trying to figure things out. He, everything's already figured out. We're the ones who just need to follow his Holy Spirit and we will end up where he has already set for us to go. Now, details. Throughout this project, there are many details that you will pick up on um, with repeated viewing. And uh, for one here, uh, you can see we show a type of matrix effect 
when we're talking about this atheist who chooses to not follow God, he throws down his Bible here. And the thought behind that is to suggest how when someone decides to not seek God or even investigate God, it's almost like someone choosing to remain within a matrix, a false prism of reality. And let's face it, most of us who don't choose to follow God and we determine to confine ourselves to the bubble of our own will and desires, what do we end up doing? Playing fantasy video games, right? Watching fantasy movies. We construct these fantasy worlds that allow us to cope with existence. But when you follow God and receive his spirit, you are set free from the matrix of the world and you are brought into his kingdom. And then you begin to find that you spend less time being entertained by fantasy. Well, why? Because for the first time, you actually prefer reality. Another detail to notice is how, um, when it speaks of how God has prepared some objects for good and some for destruction, uh, we show here the good objects being marked with red paint. And as the conversation goes, you can see these clips of the lamb's blood on the Israelite doors. Well, of course, that is a symbol for how in Christ we are saved by his blood, the true lamb. It is through him that we are even able to become those sacred and good objects within God's story. And so that's just another little detail. I'm sure a lot of you picked up on that. Now, also in the project, we have uh, this sequence of an individual uh, being led by God's spirit. And uh, because of that leading, he ends up meeting someone who needs help and they end up seeking God together and attending Bible study together. Well, before that entire scene, there was also a sequence where we showed these same two individuals crossing paths. And so that was actually kind of like a foreshadowing leading up to how, you know, when you follow God, he has a way of leading you to those who you need to meet at the right time. And so after that little foreshadowing uh, here, we then show them finally meeting because this character decided to follow the Holy Spirit. And then uh, these two characters, they begin a journey of growing closer to God. And so the idea is for someone to see this and be able to just say, you know, I'm, I'm not alone. Christians can have struggles, you know, and we see this man here was not only struggling with drinking, but also pornography. This character here struggled with smoking and clubbing, but God leads them to look for more, right? That was also a neat little scene how it just so happens that the footage here has a sign that says more, <laughs> but they end up seeking God more and walking in the spirit. Wow. And so we're not done with these characters uh, in the next video on the kingdom of God and the law of Christ. We're going to go deeper with them. And so stay tuned for that. I think you will find the way we're going to present this whole law of Christ. You're going to see a very interesting take on it. Prayers for that. And so far it's going well. And um, lastly, I would say one of my favorite scenes in the project is when it shows how Joseph's actions of following God blessed not only himself, but his entire family, which then affects all of God's people, even us. And in this timeline sequence, if you were to slow it down, you will see uh, the dates shown here. And one thing to take away there is that Joseph, he waited years before the promises of God came to pass in his life. Imagine that, imagine being imprisoned and in servitude and for years and, and you know that God has shown you that there is more for you in life. But he did not lose his faith and he continued to resist sin. And so it's an important message there that even though it may seem that you are waiting on the Lord for years, in some cases decades, don't lose hope. Remain faithful. 
keep seeking his righteousness, you will see his goodness. So again, there's so much there. Um, I didn't even get into all of it here. And so if you haven't seen the Walking in the Spirit movie yet, check that out and look for these details and narrative pieces that are within it. And the next time I see you will be on the next episode when we are exploring the law of God. So stay tuned. God bless you. Take care.